Hi guys, welcome back to the Astro Imaging Channel. Tonight's session is on printing astrophotography. And uh, not only am I going to present on that, but we also have Greg Marshall from Watch Your Head, uh, or Watch Your Red <laughs> Observatory. I'm going to let him say that, but uh, either way, uh, he uh, does uh, backlit prints, which are uh, another uh, material for printing on. Really interesting and conducive uh, to our hobby, but I'm going to get into that. But before that, as always, uh, I am going to... Uh, show off our image of the week, which goes to Derek Santiago, and let me see if I can pull that up for you right here. And um, oh my, I don't even. Again, I think this is the second week in a row. I can't even identify this target. Uh, I'm gonna have to uh, look it up here. Uh, this is uh, the Hidden Planetary Nebula, which uh, was Able 12, the Hidden Planetary Nebula. Uh, really great image here. And we are going to do uh, what Josh just referred to, a good way to refer to it as a trailing image of the week. So next week, Derek might be on to talk about his image. And uh, we had Jason on last week, but uh, if he does chime in sometime, this session he'll be on later to talk about his image. Uh, thank you, Derek, for submitting, and the submission is on our Google Plus page for now. Go find that submission thing, submit your images, and you'll be in consideration. But right now, I am going to take my screen back, and I'm going to jump right into my presentation. Uh, again, Q&A is enabled, so if you guys have any questions, Type them into Q&A, and we will get to them. Uh, some of the guys in the room will be monitoring that, and they can call them right out to me. And right now, I'm just going to jump right into my presentation. Um, <clears throat> presentation is on, and stop me if you can't see my screen. Presentation is on printing astrophotography. And... Uh, Basically, um, I just wanted to give you guys some ideas as to what you could do with your photographs. We are truly in the digital age. Uh, I would say most of the images that I take, the astro images that I take, and most of the photographs that I take, I have no intention of printing. And I guess that's different from the way it used to be. You used to have to print them to know what you got. These days, we take tons and tons and tons of photos, and some of them never get printed. Um, so I think in the uh, when we're talking about processing and we're talking about uh, all these different processing techniques, and we always come back to one saying, people say, uh, know your audience, but know the presentation. Know how people are going to be looking at it. And in some cases, that's on a, a small monitor, an iPhone, an iPad, and we don't concentrate on getting the highest resolution, highest uh, for the largest print quality. Well, if you're printing, you're you're going a little bit further, and you are trying to get that max resolution, max size. You want to be able to print it larger and larger. So this is where you uh, begin to push it further. So that was just my intro that I probably should have said on the prior screen, but here we go. I'm going to jump right in. Uh, lots of different materials to choose from when you're printing. Photograph prints, canvas wraps, prints mounted on phone, bo phone board, acrylic prints, metal prints, and backlit prints. There are lots of methods, and I'm going to go through, uh, I'm going to show you some details on a few of them. Uh, photographic prints. Um, when uh, I take my terrestrial photography and I want it to look good in a room, and, and this is actually one of the things I should have gone over uh, earlier. Uh, I have a furniture and design background. That's what I do for my occupation. Um, and I kind of come at this uh, printing astrophotography. I want to make it look good as a whole presentation. Um, so when I do my terrestrial or, or when I frame my terrestrial or my astro photographs, if I'm photo uh, framing a print, I'm going to typically frame it just like this a black frame with a mat and then a print. That right there is a 16 by 20 print, 4 inch mat, and uh, just a squared off, squared edge black frame. Um, 
when you're doing photographic prints, there are some pros and some cons. Uh, and I'm going to go through the pros really quick. They're cheap. Uh, you can have a print, uh, a four by six print, printed for like thirty cents locally, and maybe even less than that. Um, one of the things that I'm going to suggest is that you always test on smaller sizes, especially with prints. You may not be able to get larger sizes printed locally, but you can test them on the smaller sizes. Get, get an idea as to how CVS or Walgreens or one of your local or Walmart or whoever it is prints and what colors they get. You might find that their quality is pretty good. And in general, uh, the photographic prints hide noise well, and you do get good quality prints at even places like Walmart, dare I say it. Um, but pick the place that's closest to you, send them out. Then you can go on and try some different professional printers that may have little, uh, a little bit better quality or different papers or different options that you may prefer. Um, when you're printing on photographs though there might be some slight tweaking that you're going to want to do the, to the digital, digital image for the best results and uh, when I say that it hides noise well I think that also means that you can push it a little bit further because without the backlit illumination that your monitor gives an image um, Deep sky images can get kind of flat. They lack a lot of contrast. So you really do want to up the contrast just a little bit, give the brights a little bit more brightness, and uh, just try and try and exaggerate it slightly more. The cons of photographic prints are that they require framing and backing. Um, when uh, a frame, I don't know, you, you could pay $20 for framing, you could pay $150 for framing, you could pay a lot more for framing. just depends on how good the quality is. And you should always back your prints, which on a 16 by 20 can be about $20. Uh, but it prevents them from wrinkling, but that starts to add up. Um, the other thing is framing has reflections. The way the print sits behind the glass, uh, there are more... Uh, air to glass surfaces while wow, we're astronomers and we're talking about this in framing too as well um, the uh, if you do glass they do have anti-reflective coatings <laughs> again and we're talking about framing photographs here and they actually work really well uh, but they are expensive so you start to really uh, get up there if you want something professionally framed you really do get up there in price and and for a 16 by 20 print two hundred dollars isn't out of the ordinary but I'm too cheap for that so I try and limit it to about forty bucks frame 16 by 20 and I, I managed to get there somehow uh, but they your prints can get uh, bent or can get damaged um, again the cons may require trial and error for color and that's why I say try locally see what the colors look like um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go into that a, a little bit in a little bit a little bit in a little bit that's that's interesting canvas wraps I used to like canvas wraps a lot um, they are uh, relatively reasonably priced in fact if you sign up and get onto one of these uh, mailing lists you'll get sent emails every week. 30% uh, off, 40% off, 75% off, 80% off, buy one get one free. It's crazy what they, how frequently they send this stuff out. And I usually take advantage of deals. But um, the canvas wraps, and, and <clears throat> if you're not familiar with this, this is basically canvas like you would paint on, uh, wrapped around a stretcher, same exact type of thing that you would uh, paint on and you would put a kind of a traditional uh, oil painting on. Um, but when you, uh, they, they, you can put photos on them. Uh, they're really cool with terrestrial photos and I think they take well to deep sky images as well. Uh, some of the pros, uh, the prices, deals, 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 like I said earlier, get on a mailing list and you'll be surprised. Uh, no additional framing required. So you get one of those deals and you get a nice size print for uh, I don't know, thirty, forty dollars, and you don't have to put a frame on it. You don't have to do anything else. You hang that on the wall. Can hide noise. The um, canvas texture hides noise naturally. It also hides detail, but it also disguises some of the imperfections in your image. 
it can really have an eye-catching presentation. Uh, I will give a qualifier here. I think it works much better with Nebula and much worse with galaxies. I don't think galaxies have the color and contrast to really do this justice. It doesn't pop enough out of the texture of the canvas to really be um, eye-catching, but uh, with so certain nebula it looks great. Full coverage. Uh, so with a framed print, um, 16 by 20 print, 4 inch mat, then the frame. So you're taking up a lot of wall space. With a canvas wrap, edge to edge, you're seeing your image. And it's not reflective, so there's no concerns about putting it in a brightly lit area and, and not being able to see what it is. You have some concerns with uh, regular photograph prints that way. Cons. Some colors get muted. Um, it's the same thing with that canvas. You're just kind of hiding your texture and your detail. Uh, it, as a beginner, I liked it because my detail kind of stunk. But as I got better and better, I started to get to the point where I wanted to show off every, you know, I worked hard to show off those tight little details, and if it was hiding it, I was a little disappointed. Um, Mac finish, I, I look at that as a con, and it, it just goes right back to that canvas texture. Inconsistent quality between vendors, much more so than photography. Uh, it seems that there are inconsistencies in the canvas textures and inconsistencies in the black inks and inconsistencies in the way they stretch it around the stretcher, inconsistencies in the quality of the stretcher, the way they hang it on the wall. So with a photo, you're in, you're, you're in charge of all that. But with this, uh, it could be a little bit different. Um, canvas has some flubs, as I said, and the blacks aren't so black. The canvas prevents it from really looking black, gets a grayish tone. Um, and that's from the places that I've, I've had my experience. Prints on foam board. And thanks to uh, Warren, uh, who also posts Rigel for this. Um, I'm not sure... Uh, I'm not sure which vendor he used for this, but uh, he did post this um, in the uh, Printing Astrophotography thread on Cloudy Nights. It's in the Best Threads post if you wanted to kind of get a summary of what I'm going over here. Uh, printed mounts on foam board, and I'm going to say pros. It's, it's pretty much a photograph on foam board. So it has that luster of the photograph, the clarity, the detail of the photograph. They're reasonably priced. They are probably a little bit more expensive than canvas prints, but not much more. You get that same edge-to-edge -edge presentation, and they're ready to hang. The uh, cons are there's a, a specialty printer required, so you're not going to go to CVS for this. Um, and they, they can dent, bend, or crease. Not quite as delicate as a photograph, but some of the same limitations. Acrylic prints. Now, when I first saw these, I fell in love. And the only reason that I'm not still in love with them is because um, the particular vendor that I got these from, I could see lines going through it. I wasn't so happy with the quality of the print. Now, I also paid a budget price for it. I'm sure if I would have gone to one of the better vendors, I could have gotten a better quality print. Um, but that's something I'm going to experiment with in the future. But... Um, Acrylic prints, uh, the pros, adds depth. The acrylic uh, really does add depth. And you can get them in different depths of acrylic, which, and, and I don't know, how do I say it without using the word deep again? It gives it such a deep look. It just gives it such a great look. The reflections aren't really detracting as they would be with glass. Um, I think acrylic is a little bit more see-through than glass. I know it doesn't have the tint. So that may have something to do with it. The acrylic adds durability. Um, this may not be a factor for any of you, but in my house with two kids, you'd be surprised at how frequently yogurt or milk or something gets splashed on my astrophotography. Uh, the acrylic and another method really are, are durable to that. Uh, lots of acrylic size options and, like I said, depth options. And uh, one thing to think about is you can get one inch thick acrylic and do an 8 by 10 and rest it on a desk rather than hanging it on a wall. So uh, interesting uh, present 
presentation options. Uh, ready to hang, if you buy the typical acrylics, they're ready to hang, and they're really good at bright and rich colors. Um, no limitations on that, uh, as good as a print can be, maybe even a little bit better. Uh, cons, quality can be mixed. I told you before, I'm not so happy with my vendor. Um, if, if you want to know offline who they are, I'll tell you, but uh, you can also look, look on that thread and you'll see it. Uh, and acrylic prints, prints can be quite expensive. Uh, that is probably the biggest limitation. Um, metal prints, and I, these are, this is probably my current favorite printing style, and I'm using this more and more frequently. It's on a piece of aluminum, and uh, it is glossy, but there are not many reflections. Uh, as I've gone through, you've seen some, you'd be surprised at how hard it was for me to photograph these prints. Uh, I had to shut off the lights behind me, I had to turn the lights on behind me, I put it on my desk, I stood up above it. It was so difficult to get these photographed because of the reflections. So in this particular print, you can see some reflections, but you do not notice the reflections uh, when you're looking at it in, in real life. Um, as well, it's very... Uh, it, it, lighting conditions don't really matter. As with other prints, it really does matter. Uh, I find with lots of my photographs, I'm like, oh no, I can't put it there because it's a little dark. With the metal prints, they look good everywhere. But let me let me go over some of the pros and cons. Luster of photographs. Very few reflections. Ready to hang. Durable, cleanable, and dramatic. And I went over why cleanability and durability is important to me because of the yogurt wars that go on in my house. Uh, large sizes available. And I have to say, the first time I was I, I realized that this was going to be a, a hit when it came to printing was when I saw uh, J.P. Mezzavaino, uh did an installation, and it was a massive metal print. It was like so big that you wouldn't even believe you could print that big. And it was one of his mosaics, so it was probably like, I don't know, 15 panels or 20 panels, but it was ridiculous. Uh, if you Google that, you'll, you'll see something really cool. But the cons are expensive and the lead time. And um, I will say this, there can be also some inconsistency between vendors and my vendor, who I've bought them from for a long time. Um, I think they switched who they're using, and I'm not as happy with them as I used to be, so I'm kind of trying to figure out a good option for that. Um, another option, books. And I'm gonna pl I plan on doing this every year and my parents do this for every vacation they go on. Uh, but the books are really great options. Uh, about the same price as a good framed print, but pros, uh, cheap for all of the content. You can put 20 pages worth of prints, uh, three prints per page, uh, gives you lots of different sizes, uh, so you can take those small planetary nebula and put them in as a small image. Uh, crop it to a small image. Then you can put a large nebula above it. Uh, so you really get to use everything you've photographed all year long and orient and position it in a way where you're showing off the ones that show off well large and you're hiding a lot of the details of the, of the lesser ones. You really have a lot of options. You can put text in if you want to identify them. You can put, uh, if you want, you can put your conditions. Uh, I've personally uh, done descriptions of the object, some of which was taken from Wikipedia, some of which was taken from, I don't know, random knowledge throughout, but um, I just do that, and uh, lots of, uh, oh yeah, lots of objects for that. When you're doing these online, there's automated setups, so you can just send them all your images and have them do everything, or you can custom set it up yourself. Honestly, if you guys can figure out how to do astrophotography, you can figure out how to set it up yourself online um, and I don't know I'm I think these books are great uh, I would do one try it out uh, when I did mine they offered me a free small version of it or, or maybe it was like a 50% off small version of it and I had to say yes so now I have two of them um, reader specific content yeah you're putting in all the text so you know um, I am trying I'm gonna hit up my my son's school to let me do something sciency, uh, deep sky sciency, and uh, maybe I could give them some prints and a book. And uh, well, I'm going to get into that in a little bit. 
Uh, Khan, slightly worse quality than Prince. Only slightly, but uh, y y you'll see why. Um, I think, I don't know if it's the limitation of the paper or the limitations of the printers, but uh, even the very, very expensive books that I've seen just don't have that perfect print quality. Um, now, I'm sure you could do it if you're willing to spend lots and lots of money, but uh, from what I've seen, no, not, not the case. Limited cover styles, and I'll tell you this, uh, I typed up this presentation um, maybe Friday, and I went over to my parents' house this morning, and they got their new book from one of their last vacations, and the cover looked awesome. It was a lot nicer than the cover of my book. And here's the cover of my book. I always thought it looked kind of cheesy. It's a faux canvasy thing with a picture. Well, theirs was actually like a rubberized, leatherized cover. Um, so that was it. And, and basically the cons, not much else. Uh, you guys should be doing this. You should definitely try it out. Um, even if you, instead of printing a bunch of stuff for your wall, print yourself out a, co a coffee table book and throw it on your coffee table and you'll have something to talk about with your friends when they come over. Backlit prints. Now, I have, I've seen backlit prints. I've seen deep sky backlit prints, but I've never seen an amateur deep sky backlit print in person. So I know how the Hubble images are represented in them because I've seen them in the stores occasionally. Uh, but uh, we have someone that's going to speak about them, so I'm quickly going to go over the pros and cons, but... Hopefully he'll be able to delve into detail. Monitor-like presentation, rich and bright, dramatic look, and the backlighting really helps the dim objects that we're photographing. Cons, and we'll find out about this price-wise, how expensive they are. And of course, you need a specialty printer. And here's hoping we can find a specialty printer who understands deep sky photography. Um, and he's going to be with us in a second. I think I got my slides scrambled up because I was going to intro into him now, but I think I'm going to go over the one more thing first. Um, this, uh, like I said earlier, uh, you don't have control over people's monitors. This is going to give you complete control over the presentation of your image. So if you're a control freak, you know the color, the crop, the orientation, the size, and the brightness that people are going to see. So it's almost more important that you get all these things right. And I'm going to leave you hanging here because one of the important things you should do, and it's one of the things that I don't do, is calibrate your monitors. And I'll be honest, um, I'm not sure if I could save money by buying a $300 calibration device, but I'm sure I could understand it a lot better. But I'm hoping to have someone uh, speak about this in a future session about how, why it's important, how to use it, and what it does for you. But basically, the point of monitor calibration is so that you can get more consistency from monitor to print. So that you know, uh, basically, you take the print and you hold it up to the monitor, and it looks as well represented as it possibly can. Obviously, the monitors have the backlighting that help them, but um, the, uh, what, what you want to do is you want to be able to show yourself um, what it's going to look like out of the printer. Uh, does require hardware and still requires some trial and error, but as I said, I'm not an expert, so that's about all I'm going to get into with this. And one other thing I've been asked, um, and it's, it's kind of hard for, it, it was harder for me to answer uh, two weeks ago, but I've sold three more prints. I sold three prints last week, and I believe that I finally sold 10 prints total. So I've probably recouped about 1% of my spending on, uh, on astronomy gear. Uh, maybe even less if you count the prints that I've given away and uh, my, my expenses for printing them out, of course. But, uh, but either way, how do I sell my prints? And uh, I have a venue. I own a furniture store. Uh, we're kind of interior design oriented, so I put them up there and I have some astronomy props around it and I just make it look good. And um, sometimes people come in and buy like three or four of them or one of them or whatever it is, but finding that venue is really important. Art galleries are actually pretty interested in astronomy. Um, I've had friends go to an art gallery, 
start talking about astronomy. The art gallery owner asked them if they had a telescope in their car, which of course they did, and they pulled it out in the street corner and got to look at some planets. Uh, it was a really interesting story, and um, it kind of stimulated our club to start doing downtown astronomy, uh, sidewalk astronomy, and uh, we. Uh, it, it, so it really causes for great conversations. Um, that's what you're going to get out of these venues. Uh, craft show uh, in my store. That's what. That's why they're there. I hope to sell a few. I'm not really doing it to uh, make a ton of money. Uh, but I like having conversations about astronomy in the store and um, or wherever I am. Craft show is the same thing. I think uh, a lot of people have success through, uh, selling through craft shows or um, sometimes, I don't know, uh, fairs or anything like that because, uh, again, you've just got a lot of people. And if 100 people walk by, a couple are going to be interested and uh, one out of 1,000 might buy. Uh, online sites. There are some online sites where you can sign up and sell your prints. They print them out for you. You do lose a lot of control over the look and um, presentation of your prints, so I don't use any of these. I've seen actually some of the pros or the people that I consider pros in this hobby do sell th through those online sites, and I've been tempted to reach out and ask what kind of success they've had, um, but they are out there. Uh, and there are a few of them. Uh, fine Art America is more of the fine art side. And then you can get uh, more into the publishing side. Uh, even uh, Jetty Images and those types of places will, will buy your images, but they pay a lot less. Um, the more important way that I sell my prints is by getting exposure. And I give away a lot of prints. I give away, every time someone hits me up for something to give to a charity auction, I give them a print, especially if I'm going to the charity auction where I can talk about it and uh, just kind of get people excited. That's where people find out about you. That's where those conversations take place. Um, I'll tell you, if I had a telescope that I was selling when I went to these auctions, I could sell a bunch of telescopes. Prints are probably a little bit harder, but uh, it's all about the conversations. And you guys have heard me say it before. Um, as an astrophotographer, yes, I, I've done true outreach, but as an astrophotographer, I look at my astrophotography as my opportunity for outreach because I like astrophotography because I can bring it with me and show it to people and talk about it. And sometimes I talk over their heads and tell them what went into processing, but sometimes I actually talk about what they're seeing and just look how awesome that is. And... Um, it doesn't have to be the best image. It doesn't have to be the most technically perfect image. In fact, I have not sold what I consider to be my technically best images. It's always the ones that I see the flubs in that sell. Um, so basically that's it. And uh, we do have Greg Marshall in the room. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys are still there with me. And let me get my screen back. Um, I do see one question. Whenever I try to get a larger tr a sized image printed, Astro Terrestrial, and I send it to a place like Walmart, what I uh, what I what gets printed is always cropped, and quite often important parts of the image m is missing. How to get the entire image? Um, I. Uh, so, so I haven't printed at Walmart in a long, long time. They were uh, my first few sets of prints, but I think if you just say do not um, adjust the images in any way, they, they basically don't. Um, uh, one thing, can I jump in here? Yes. One of one of the things you have to watch out for is your aspect ratio, um, the width of your picture compared to the height of your picture. When you go to Walmart, Costco, or any of those places, they print generally to um, an 8 by 10, 4 by 5, etc. size. And your sensor is not necessarily putting out that size. And so what they'll do is they'll maximize one of the dimensions so that it gets, it fills up the, um, the medium, the page, as it were. And in doing that, it shoves the edges off the other end. 
So one of the things you have to do is tell them, like if you're printing something that is much longer in aspect ratio than it is wide, than the standard uh, 8 by 10, then you need to tell them that you want the, um, the wide side to be the 10 inches, even though that means that they'll never fill up the 8 inches. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope so. Yes. Adam, yeah. we got, I asked a couple of questions, made a couple of points over in the uh, uh, comment section, too. So you might want to look at that before we go to the other presenter. Um, um, OK. Uh, so Alex said he had a friend make a canvas print of his Messier collage, and it came out very dense and dark, even though the original data file was bright and clear. How does one prevent this? And I think this goes, uh, goes back to uh, the fact where you uh, you're looking at it on a backlit screen, and you do have to push it further. And what I would really suggest doing is taking your entire Messier um, file and print it on a 4 by 6 photo and just see how it comes out. For 30 cents, that, uh, that information will be really valuable. And you're going to see just how bright, like, the... Uh, how bright it's going to come out. And I know you're not going to see any detail at all, but you're going to get an idea. And um, just before you go and spend $30 or $60 or $120 on a canvas print. And uh, have, I, have you ever used Costco? So I, I said Walmart. I used Walmart years and years, and years ago when I first had my prints printed out. Um, most recently I've used... Uh, more recently, I've used CVS locally, but now I use Adorama Picks uh, for all of my prints because I get them quickly. I've come to rely on their quality, uh, but they are the ones who, I said I say it offline, but they are the ones whose metal prints seem to have changed a little bit on me. Um, but, uh, and, uh, yeah, and Alex is saying, have you ever used Costco? Because you can download their printer configuration to match your output, and there's better. So, yeah, that goes into printer and color calibration where you can uh, do that, which could almost get its own session. Uh, maybe it should have been this one, but uh, I didn't feel comfortable presenting on that because I still struggle with some of that stuff myself. Um, I am going to hand it over to Greg. If there are any questions in the meantime, please uh, feel free to call them out. But, Greg... The mic is yours. Oh, great. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Very good. Uh, all right. So I want to share a screen here, and I'm totally new to this. So hold on. See if I can actually do this. All right. Can you see that? Yes. I'll do a full screen. Okay, so first of all, a uh, little introduction. Oh, Greg. I'm Greg Marshall. Greg? Yes. Did you click play? Uh, I did uh, uh, a slideshow, yes. Did that kill it? Okay. No, uh, you're going to have to share full screen. So hit escape. Okay. Uh, hover over the... Um, yeah, you're going to have to go to the Google Hangout window. Yeah. Hover over screen share. Top left should say full screen. Uh, or one of those boxes should say full screen. Okay, I see full screen, yes. Yeah, for the slideshow, we have to use full screen screen share. Otherwise, we don't see the actual slideshow. Okay. Then... Okay, how's that? Now we're good. All right, very good. So uh, I'm Greg Marshall. Uh, I run a small business. The small is actually not the right word. It's more like microscopic uh, business called uh, Watcher at Observatory. I always have to explain that name. You see the door to the observatory is only five feet high. So when you go through, you think you can go in without hitting your head, but no, you can't. So you have to watch your head. All right. So... Um, one of the things that I have been doing is uh, we're selling prints of all sorts, but most popular are these uh, backlit prints. Uh, that is, it, images printed on film and then lit from behind. So why backlit? 
Well, anytime that you print on a reflective medium like paper or what have you, uh, you cannot get a contrast ratio of more than 100 to 1. Uh, metal prints might be an exception to that. I don't really know that uh, for a fact. Uh, this is just something that I've been told that in any reflective medium you can't get more than 100 to 1. Uh, human vision, on the other hand, can exceed uh, 10,000 to 1 contrast ratio. Now with film, you uh, transparency film typically has a D-max of 3.6, which is uh, approximately a 4,000 to 1 contrast ratio. Now how this idea really came to me is uh, um, historical. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, when I was in college, I took some photography classes and my professor actually did uh, an exhibit of backlit uh, film images, and I was just blown away by them. Um, so I've always had this in my mind and I've done it a little bit uh, before with other images, but realized that astrophotography is, is the, the, the perfect uh, kind of image for this because we are dealing with images that are inherently huge uh, dynamic range. So this is how uh, I build these things. Um, and I should note here that I used to buy these backlit frames. Uh, and they were just too expensive and too limiting in, in the sizes and aspect ratios available. So I figured out how to make them myself. Um, and it's really pretty simple. This is an exploded view. Uh, so we have a backing sheet. Uh, and then there is some filler material that goes around. Uh, the light pipe is actually an, an acrylic, a special kind of uh, acrylic material. And then it has LED strips. Uh, along the edge. So this is basically the same kind of uh, technology that is used to backlight uh, an LCD display, for example. Um, so right in front of that is your image printed on uh, transparency film, and you have a matte board and glass uh, in front of it. Now, so the, the real key to this is the printing. Uh, I do not have this printer myself. They cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, but I have access to one. Uh, it images uh, with a, a laser at over 1,200 pixels per inch. Now these are uh, full range pixels, not like in printing where you have dots per inch. These are, are true 24-bit uh, per pixel uh, pixels. Uh, and as I said, you have uh, a Dmax of about 3.6. Um, because they're LED lit, the power consumption is very low. Um, for the larger sizes that I use, they are uh, aluminum sectional frame, uh, which is only good for wall hanging. Uh, but I do smaller sizes uh, with a, a wooden frame that can be either uh, wall hung or desktop. And of course, they come with uh, suitable power supplies. Uh, so quickly go through the different sizes here. Uh, these are my standard sizes. I do custom ones also. So uh, an 8 by 10 inch frame is wood with a 5 by 7 uh, image area. Uh, you can get the frame in different sizes or different colors. Sorry, black, white, or metallic silver. They include a, a kickstand for a desktop, and the list price on that is $74. Uh, 16 by 20 uh, has a 10 by 13. All of these sizes are approximate, depends upon the aspect ratio of the image, but the, that's your, your typical size. Um, alum, aluminum section frame, uh, these can be in any color, but uh, the standard is a sort of natural brushed aluminum look, um, and that's what I keep in stock. Anything else just takes longer. Um, and that is list price of $199. And then there's a 20 by 24 with a 12 by 16 inch image area. Uh, it's very similar to the 16 by 20 for 279. So here's a, an example of the 8 by 10 uh, in a desktop situation. And there's the 16 by 20. There's a little detail what the uh, aluminum section frame looks like if you're not familiar with them. So I can also do custom options. You can do uh, non-standard sizes and aspect ratios. Uh, you can choose the color of, of uh, mat and frame. 
excuse me. And you mentioned uh, previously about glass. Uh, this is less of a problem with backlit images uh, because you've got light coming from behind it. So light from the front doesn't show as much. Still, it can be a problem in certain situations. Uh, so low glare, there's, there's two different kinds of anti-reflective uh, glass, really. Uh, in, in the cheaper case, which means it's only about three times as much as, as a standard glass, um, it just has a, a surface that is etched so that it doesn't reflect light. Uh, and then the other kind actually has an anti-reflective coating, just like you have on a lens, and that costs about eight times as much as regular glass. Um, another option I've started doing recently is what I call UDR, Ultra Dynamic Range. This is a, a proprietary processing uh, that I do to your, your image uh, that gives it even darker blacks and, and brighter stars. Now, theoretically, this gives you a contrast ratio of more than a million to one. Um, in practice, I have no way of measuring it. It's just way beyond <laughs> the realm of reasonable measurement. And basically, I can do uh, any idea that you come up with. This, for example, uh, my local photography club approached me uh, to do an award for our outgoing president. So uh, we took one of my images, uh, the elephant's trunk, and put it in a special gold frame uh, that is a uh, shadow box type of frame. So you can't tell from this, but the image is actually recessed somewhat from that. And then we had the glass etched with a message from the club. Um, to order the images, all you have to do is to send me your digital photo uh, through my website and need full resolution and preferably 16 bits per channel. Um, Dropbox is, is the, uh, the best way to send them and indicate the, the size that you desire. And I'll evaluate the image, make some suggestions, and send you a, a proof of the process image, which gives you a, a better idea of what it will look like in the final print. Uh, typically takes one to two weeks for standard options, other things, uh, it's case by case. That's it. Get out of this. Adam, can, can I take a turn in here? Go, go right ahead. I, I'm going to gloat for Greg because he won't gloat on his own pictures, but um, I've been working with Greg on printing these pictures for, I don't know, maybe like five or six months now, and I've gone through probably four runs of getting these pictures made with him and I've probably gotten 30 pictures printed out now at this point and just ordered a bunch more but um, I went through and did the metallic prints and the canvas prints, the books, the every other kind of print that you can try and I even tried other backlit prints and <clears throat> while the cost might be a little bit more I I just want to say the, the pictures are amazing when you actually look at them in person they they have more pop than they have on your computer screen even, um, and more than you can see on a TV. The resolution is just great, and they're, <clears throat> I, they're just, to me, they're totally worth it. So I've gotten into selling pictures some myself here recently, and <clears throat> as far as actually actively trying to sell them, I've got to the point now where these are just so reliable and so much better than anything else I've done that I, I feel it's only fair to offer these as the ones to sell. So they, um, the pop and the range in them and what I think is added dimensionality really is uh, dramatically different. The closest thing I ever came to were the metal prints like you used, which are very nice too. But um, what I really like especially about these also is that the ambient light does not really matter. If you're in a sunny room or if you're in a completely dark room, these pictures just look phenomenal um, and they look the same all the way around. Um, Greg and I talked a little bit about whether or not they actually uh, give you a more of a three-dimensional effect and I guess my take on it is that the increased contrast is what actually helps give more of a three-dimensional effect to it. So. There. Uh, thank you, Josh. Um, 
Regarding the, the 3D stuff, yeah, I, I do hear that from uh, my customers all the time uh, that they, they say it just seems to, to, to pop and look very 3D. Um, as a former stereoscopic photographer, I take a little bit of issue with, with that, but <laughs> I'll take the compliment anyway. It does something uh, that, that people just really like. I guess, and, I, uh, yeah, I guess I shouldn't say, oh, like a stereoscopic image. <laughs> but uh, you said so, that right before it popped out of my my head. But uh, I, Josh, what were you saying? Well, I was going to share a couple of the pictures that's great. Right. Great has done for me, and then I wanted to share uh, one more small section of printing stuff that people may find interesting. So, just a couple of the pictures that Greg has done. Uh, let me share my full screen here. Uh, sharing now, I assume. Yep. So, so I'll come over to Flickr here. And these were just some of the recent pictures that I got done with Greg. This is the Pelican Nebula, which I did as a uh, collaboration with my dad. And obviously, it's a picture of a picture with an iPhone. So the the bright stuff is a little bit blown out, but you get a good, a good impression of kind of the quality and the great color. This horse head here was um, obviously reflections on the glass from the iPhone, but this was the UDR that Greg was talking about, and uh, we experimented on a small black and white mono starless version of the horse head, and uh, that one came out phenomenally well. I actually have that one sitting at my desk at work and probably get two or three comments a day on it. Um, and then my prize is the NGC 1333 getting, I think, the third version of that printed out already, and it's just... Uh, when I was talking about the added depth, this one just is clear as day, just just very, very nice and holds up very well to blowing it up pretty large and from across the room, but like, like you're looking into space. Um, and then this was my first one that I got with him, which was my Starless Orion image. Kind of the same deal, just, just really, really nice depth to it and uh, beautiful colors. Um, I'll also say that Greg's done... Uh, awesome job, and it's one of the things that's been nice working with him is actually matching the print to what my pictures are. And as you said, Adam, sometimes that's a little bit of a struggle is getting the pictures to come out like you envision them coming out or like they look on your screen and just have not had to deal with that really at all. Uh, M27 was another good one. It's just uh, because it has such a dark background and a bright object in front of it really pops off the screen there. So... Uh, so just wanted to uh, share some of those uh, to give some more examples of really cool stuff that he does. And then I will talk about one last, um, one last printing technology that you guys haven't talked about, which I really only got into experimenting with a little bit um, a while ago, and I am looking to get back into it. But that was 3D printing. Um, astrophotography images. So my pictures weren't really up to snuff when I first started doing this, but um, I was experimenting basically by using different colors and uh, different layers with astrophotography, and there's a program called PhotoMesh that turns a uh, 2D picture into a 3D object so that you can actually 3D print them out, and it basically looks sort of like a, like a, a top topography map that you would look, look at. Um, and there's lots of really nice fine-tuned controls on it to give different depths to different colors and darks or lights or actually different colors, and you can really control that very well. So when I first got started, and this was back when I had time to mess around with my 3D printer, I was buying different um, transparent and translucent uh, plastics to go into. And as you can see, I made a bunch that you could actually put on your uh, windowsill and see through the uh, planets came out really well. The uh, the galaxies were cool because they actually had more of an inverted look to them. Um, if, once I get back into this, I'll probably experiment more with uh, true colors. Um, the 3D printing market is advanced far enough that there's potential to do an even better job on this. But uh, another fun thing that I made with it was actually a 3D printed light box which was sort of like what Greg's doing, only it was with, um, this was actually backlit with LED as well, um, and it was just a little box that was, as you can see, like four inches by four inches, had a little light in it, and was just a little wall hanger I made for my dad, actually, for his office. But um, 
fun different ways to experiment with this stuff and try different things out, but I definitely think that I got a lot of really cool comments on these too. So for people who have those hobby 3D printers, it might be uh, something fun to experiment with if you have different different colors and um, and transparent and translucent colors. And Like I said, the uh, big key to that doing that was that program photo to mesh. So that's what I had, Adam. I just wanted to share those. Sorry, I was talking to a muted microphone. Thank you, Josh. Um, yeah, and Alex is saying uh, he noticed in our presentation about printing astrophotography that no, none of the presenters actually talked about using a home printer. And there is one person in our crew who, ha who actually prints at home, and he's not here tonight. Um, but maybe, uh, I know he was actually willing to talk about it, so maybe in the near future we'll have him uh, give a little talk about his printer. I think we probably have in the past asked him about his printer, but I don't remember specifically what show it is. Um, I do see that Jason Gonzalez is in the room, and uh, he is our Image of the Week winner from last week, so if he would go over... Uh, or go over if you would just speak a little bit about it. Uh, you there? Yeah. We got a, we got at least one question left over. Uh, Hello from Greg. Oh, Jason. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, go, I, ahead, Jason. go ahead, Jason. Jason, go, go ahead. ahead. I, find this question. I honestly just wanted to make sure my mic worked because of what happened last week. But um, okay. I'll butt out for a while. All right. Um, yeah, I can talk a little bit about that image uh, from last week. Right now. You want to pull it up? Yep. All right. All right. Um, so, yeah, that, thanks again for uh, selecting an image um, of mine. This one is actually uh, with a little bit different setup than the last um, couple of firsts in here for me. Um, number one with the reducer on the edge and then uh, Atlas Pro, which I picked up over the holidays. Uh, so look, both those things are uh, helping the new camera. Uh, produce some pretty good images, and I know this camera has uh, been a topic of a lot of discussion. So this is with the cooled CMOS, the ASI 174mm pool, and I've honestly felt like it's been doing a great job for me on these galaxy images. And um, this picture here is about nine hours of exposure, and the cooling's really good on the camera. Got down to negative uh, 30C for for all of this, and uh, but that was pretty good. But this this camera now puts me down at just below an arc second per pixel, so it's a pretty good match for galaxies with uh, the setup I have now. So again, thanks for uh, for selecting it and uh, did a lot of work processing it. No problem. I Thank like you for of age with my processing. Thank you for coming on and contributing. And one of these days, we may have to have you on to uh, discuss your camera a little bit and. Uh, your trials, tribulations, and uh, whether you're happy or not, because uh, I, I think that some of these smaller censored CMOS cameras right, might really be the future uh, of astrophotography. It really seems like the way we're going. Yeah, I think it's a topic of contention. Um, you know, these obviously are all new to the market, and um, they're coming in coming in a lot lower cost than the, the comparable CCDs. But I mean, in my experience so far. And I, I honestly have never shot with a CCD, but um, you know I've been happy with the product and uh, been able to pull out what it, what looks like as deep an exposure as a, a comparable CCD camera. Yeah, yeah. I think these days it's becoming less about whether it's a CCD or a CMOS. The CCDs always had the inherent advantage, but uh, CMOS has gotten all of the attention and the miniaturization and um, I don't know. They don't have to get much better. Um, I think what they can improve on is this, you know, a larger chip. If you could have a, you know, an APS-C size CMOS sensor in one of these cameras, I think it would be a, a killer setup. But I think we're a little ways out for that yet. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I just don't know if, if 
the astrophotography market is going to get there. We want to get there. I just don't know. I think it's going to be pick a smaller, for a long time, I think it's going to be pick a smaller CMOS or pick a bigger, uh, uh, pick a bigger CCD. Sorry, my phone's uh, going nuts, but uh, okay. Um, Alex, where was that question that you said came in for Greg? Well, it's hard to tell because um, every I typed in three questions, but because I was the only one typing in questions, they came in one after the other after the other. But if you go back to Greg's uh, presentation where he's got the, the light pipe special acrylic, um, I've got a use for that kind of thing. I want to make a, a sign near my observatory to tell people where the gate is in our observatory complex. And I haven't figured out how to get the... Uh, light pipe special acrylic. What I want to do is I want to put a, a red. If you go, if you can flip back to that particular uh, slide, Greg, um, or maybe, well, you don't need to, but um, you had a special acrylic with a row of um, LEDs. And are the LEDs placed on the edge of the special acrylic? Are they placed behind the special acrylic? What is special about that acrylic? Okay, can you hear me? I can. Okay, a, a couple of things. Uh, the acrylic material is special in my case in that it has um, uh, microscopic particles embedded in it to reflect the light. Uh, but for what you're doing, I don't think that's necessary at all. I, I, I think what you're talking about is just taking some acrylic and like engraving uh, some, some lettering in it. Is that right? That, that kind of thing, yeah. And I want those yeah. letters to show. I want the word gate to show. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that would work just fine with ordinary clear uh, acrylic. I haven't actually tried it, but so, I, I believe so if it I take some if I take some quarter-inch yeah. thick acrylic, uh, just regular clear acrylic, and I take my router and route out the letters and then put a uh, LED on one side of it, I should get what I want. Right. So, yeah, the question about the lighting is, uh, in, in my case, yes, the, the LED goes along uh, one or two edges, depending upon how okay. wide the material is. Um, you do ideally want to make that edge uh, polished. So, you know, cut it very smooth and then okay. uh, polish it like on with a buffing wheel. Okay. Um, that's good. And then... Um is it possible for a common ordinary human being to buy the metallic uh, infiltrated uh, acrylic? Um, well, I've only been able to buy it, uh, you know, in uh, in full sheets. Four by eight. Uh, well, that's that's not quite true. I did buy a sample once that was absurdly expensive. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. But. As I said, for your application, I, I think ordinary clear acrylic would work. Okay. Now, um, I made a comment a little bit later on about um, uh, how we don't uh, do our own printing, and you said, hey, yeah, well, that's because Costco is so much better and uh, cheaper and stuff like that. Well, can, can you tell us about printing at Costco? Because um, that's what I've always heard is that, Costco puts out as good a print as you're going to get anywhere, and it's just a lot easier to do because you don't have to have the upkeep on the printer. Yeah, absolutely true. Uh, well, first of all, let me say that you know I got into the astrophotography not through astronomy but through photography, um, and so I, I know a lot of people in the photography world, and except for people who do you know specialized uh, processes, everybody I know uses Costco. Um, they do really good work. Um, I mean, it does take a little bit of effort on your part, uh, as Adam was saying, about getting it, it calibrated uh, so that you know what you're going to get, uh, you know, how to prepare your image so that you'll get what you want out of it. Um, and they also have two different printing technologies. Uh, what most people use is a standard, well, if, if you go for the smaller prints, you get, uh, I believe it's a standard photographic uh, paper, and I don't know exactly how that works, because that's not the one that I use. Um, I use their poster prints, uh, which is actually done with an Epson printer. Uh, it's a much larger, specialized printer. 
um, but but that's what it what it is, and it's it's dirt cheap, um, and once you get it properly calibrated, uh, the the quality is just excellent. Do you use their uh, printer uh, profile configuration? I have tried it, um, but no, I don't really. Um, it just I I know from experience now. Uh, what, what it's going to look like. Uh, along the same lines, uh, Adam was saying before about the calibration and, and whether or not it's worthwhile to get the you know, $300 monitor calibration devices. I've tried that, and frankly, um, the device didn't do any better job than, than I could do by eye. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. The, the funny thing is, uh, you a couple times, maybe two or three trial and error times, and you figure out pretty much what what results you're going to get out of it. Uh, it's harder to anticipate what it looks like on another person's monitor. That I've discovered. That's absolutely true. Yeah, I. Yep. When I go to work and I process something and I see it here and I process it, completely different. Like night and day, not happy with anything I process at work on my home computer. Um, so. Uh, if you if you'd like, I can give you the uh, the process or the technique that I use to to figure out uh, <laughs> how to adjust the, the image. Um, I'll make a, a straight print without doing anything special to it. When I get that print back, I then do adjustment layers in Photoshop to try and make my screen look just like the print does, or as close to it as I as I can. Uh, then when I get that matched, I undo it. I do another adjustment layer that gets it back to uh, the way I want it to look on the screen. Uh, then you just take out the, uh, the first adjustment layer that made it look like the print, and what you're left with is the, the adjustments that are needed to get it there. That's a good idea. That's a very cool idea. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. Huh. So, Greg, I have a question about your backlit prints. <clears throat> Sure. Are they are they so I wasn't familiar with that technology at all until I started working with you. And then somebody asked me if they're like Duratran. So then I looked up Duratran, which seems like it must be sort of similar, but is there is there a difference between what you're doing and Duratran? <laughs> uh, there's a very slight difference. Uh, Duratrans uh oh wait a minute, actually I'm trying to remember the terminology. I believe that there's uh, Duratrans and Duraclear. And Duratrans is translucent. Um, in other words, it, it is a transparency film, but it has like a diffusion layer already built in on the back. Um, whereas mine, the Duraclear, does not. It's just straight film. And frankly, you could use either um, for this purpose. But the uh, the people that I get the the print from used or clear. Okay. Hmm. We're gonna have to find a way to uh, see these things in person. Do you you don't show at any of the astronomy shows, do you? Well, probably not any that you go to. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, not me, right? Yeah, I'm on the west coast, and yeah, I do. Um, uh, I show and, and sell prints at uh, the, the, the local uh, uh, star parties and uh, craft fairs, uh, occasionally in galleries, things like that. Uh, but actually, you know, selling uh, prints, well, I, I don't have separate accounting for the, the prints themselves. I sell my astrophotos in many different formats, uh, but altogether they make up, um, well, thousands of dollars a year in sales. Mm. Very cool. I know how you can see one, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> how was that? Order one? Yeah. Or you I, can come you can I'm come trying, visit me in Florida if you need to, I guess. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of what I don't know. I have to think of the right target to uh, frame. And I'm working on one right now that's gonna torture me. Because I'm, I'm, I was working on it last year before my camera broke. And I'm so, hoping to get it done this year. 
The um, his his smaller ones are great if you're just trying to get an idea of what they're like and and everything. Even they are phenomenal. I just got the horse head done at like um, we did them in eight eight by eleven and a half um, with little desktop kickstands, and it, those ones are affordable, but they're also really cool. That's the one I said I put up at work. That just um, it's perfect for like if you're looking for something at your desk to get an idea of what they look like. Um, or you can come down to Florida and get out of that nasty weather up there and hang out for a weekend. Yeah. Hey, any of you planning to come to Oregon for the solar eclipse next year? I'm Not going to um, Idaho nearby. Um, hmm. so, uh, are you talking about the Oregon Star Party in particular or just in general? Well, yeah, uh, I will be, as I always am, at the uh, Oregon Star Party. Uh, but for next year, of course, it's going to be centered uh, uh, yeah, around the awesome. eclipse. Yeah. I uh, went up to Oregon Star Party last uh, last year, and it was quite an adventure. It was really cool. I'm not so sure that it's my favorite place for an eclipse because it doesn't have the mobility that I'd like to chase an eclipse. But there's nothing wrong with going up there and the day before, although it's going to be 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, so you, you could leave at 5 o'clock in the morning and get out on the main highways where you can run back and forth. Mm -hmm. But I think that's important when you're eclipse chasing. Yep. All right. Well, <clears throat> I uh, we do not have a session planned for next week, but one will be scheduled midweek, so keep your eyes open for it. Uh, I do want to thank Greg for coming by. Um, thank you for having me. No problem at all. And uh, watch your head observatory. Do you want to, uh, well, why don't, uh, how about this? I'll post the, uh, the link in the description of this event. So you'll be able to click that and find your way over there and um, read about his prints. And uh, that's basically all we've got for you tonight. So thanks for coming, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.